Kanye responds, how do you feel about us not streaming and only selling digitally? We sold 1 million items on Yeezy.com, so we know it's possible. AKA, direct to consumer. We are in the midst of a revolution, a music revolution that will not be streamed. D-I-Y. Okay, DIYers, over the last week, Kanye West pissed off <laughs> his audience once again. This time in a very specific way that is related to his new album, the follow-up to Vultures 1 and Vultures 2. You may be asking, what exactly happened this week, Curtis? On a very popular Kanye West fan page on Twitter, or X, Yay Fanatics, he or she that is in charge of this fan account discloses conversations that they had with Kanye West via DMs. Now, these have all been confirmed, and the screenshot reads as follows. Was talking with the team, this is Kanye West, I was talking with the team about how to release the next album. Like James Blake said, streaming devalues our music. We covered that story last week. We sell albums on Yeezy.com. I got 20 million Instagram followers. When 5% of my followers buy an album, that's 1 million albums sold. That's 300K more than the biggest album last year. We sold 1 million items on Yeezy.com on Super Bowl Sunday, so we know it's possible. How do you feel about us not streaming and only selling albums digitally? That was the first part of it. This individual also responded, I don't know, yay. People are going to pirate the album first. Honestly, one's his lead, that's crazy. Getting to more people possible is only possible with the streaming services. The aim of a man of God is to reach as most people as you can. Share your message, amen. They did not bring God into this, that's wild. Kanye responds, this is what James Blake was talking about. You hitting me saying you need vultures, but the streaming companies have made it where you don't have to value us as artists. I have a platform where you can buy the album for $20, then you bring God into it. Somebody gonna have to tell the truth, I'm gonna tell it. That's a legendary amount of entitlement. Fans reached out to not only Kanye, but his collaborator on this project in Vultures 2, Ty Dolla Sign. One of them said, hey, bro, don't let Ye release the album on the website. You lose a lot more. And they will piracy, these folks cannot spell for shit. They will piracy the album, and this will hinder you in an absurd way. Ty Dolla Sign says, that's what these streaming services want you to believe, so they can stay on top. Music costs us money and time to make, but they don't want us to get paid for it. They're selling the audience subscriptions and renting our music out while giving us a fraction of a penny. Talk about it, dollar. Dollar, dollar side. I hear what you're saying, but we're already the number one album with the first Vultures. It's time to figure out the unlock on how to bring the music straight to our audience, AKA direct to consumer. <clears throat> Excuse me. Straight to our audience and cut the middleman out. Artists are getting and that has to stop. Awesome opportunity, you would think, for Yeezy fans who love his music so much, they'd want to, and not just his music, they love the person, apparently. But look at some of these responses that you'll find here in the comments just on this post alone. Here's the first initial post. Dude, you gotta tell him we need it on streaming, legit. No one wants this. No, bro. Tell him we want it on streaming. Kanye West, why do you want your music behind a paywall, making it less accessible to everyone, but push the idea of making clothes cheaper and affordable, accessible for everyone? You're kind of contradicting yourself. Shout out to Flawzilla, who's the one who tagged me in this. Here's one. I want to find this one comment that I thought was really interesting. Here it is. This comment is kind of funny to me. This person, Dat Josh, says, I thought kids nowadays were good with computers. Y'all telling me you can't buy the album and upload it to your favorite streaming platform? It's not that hard, guys. Just buy the album. Here's my initial thoughts as I read through all of this. It sounds like, first of all, Kanye's doing what he's always done and that he prides himself on being ahead of the curve. He prides himself on being different from his peers and always trailblazing a new way, even when it's down a path that a lot of people don't want to travel down as artists, as fans or whatever. This is something we've always seen of him. He's going to find something that's going to push your button, even as a diehard, and then go the opposite direction and then test the waters on that and, and and, and show you how much of a rebel he is. In this particular situation, though, I think what's interesting is he knows his status right now. 
And he understands probably one of the most valuable lessons for longevity in this game as an artist. The moment you become predictable, people stop caring. Before I get into this next video, which I want to react to where this Instagrammer brilliantly breaks down what Kanye may be doing. I think it's important that we make a clear difference between a fan and a consumer. Some of these people are categorizing themselves as fans, but they're really just consumers. What is the difference? Everyone who buys a product from Kanye West, from anybody, can be a consumer. Not everybody's a fan. Based upon your level of fan, which is just a short word for fanatic, it translates in your buying behavior. In this case, if it is your goal to support the artist, it's a no-brainer. And it's not a matter of the masses having access to it. For the masses to all be accepting of it, it would have to be at some level mediocre at its core. We'll get to that in just a second, but I want to react to this video from Rebecca Backen, who says, have you heard of the lean startup? It's for tech, but you can use these strategies for music too. What do you mean? Kanye was building his music business as a tech startup. As a former tech entrepreneur who is now a music marketer, this is very fascinating for me to see. So there is a concept in the startup world called lean startup. So the whole concept of lean is to develop a minimum viable product. So you basically create something, test the demand for it before you invest further. So how is Kanye implementing this strategy? In the music creation process, Kanye is operating differently where he hosts listening parties and tests his music on an audience before the songs are done. He mm -hmm. then goes back in the studio, makes changes based on the feedback and reactions he got when playing it live. That's also why there are a lot of delays similar to tech startups. He's also using it when he's rolling out his products. So what really caught my interest in Kanye's whole Super Bowl stunt, where he bought a Super Bowl commercial for $7 million and showed a zero-budget commercial shot on his phone, which then resulted in $19 million sales in 24 hours. What Kanye did is to price every product exactly the same so he could test the demand of all the products side by side mm. he knew he was gonna get a lot of traffic and data so he used it to test where he should continue further development and innovation because he then understands the demand Kanye also uses the crowdfunding approach I don't know if you noticed but he had several weeks of delivery time of these products that he sold this is basically how crowdfunding works where you sell it before you create it so you're not left with tons of unnecessary inventory Music producers, rappers, and singers, are you looking to get some constructive feedback on your newest music? Joining Critique My Beats is super easy. All you gotta do is reserve a pass to critiquemybeats.com. Click on book a slot and choose if you wanna get one beat review, two beat reviews on our live stream every Monday. Best beat and best song of the night is going to win a cash prize. Join us at Critique My Beats. Com. Even though this is focused in more so to what Kanye West did with the Super Bowl commercial, I do think one thing that's really interesting is that by having his music sitting on the website, it's also giving him an opportunity to test the 80-20 rule, which is, in this scenario, the 20% of his audience that buys 80% of his product. If he's able to satisfy them, in his theory holds, which it does for many different industries, many different businesses, many different strategies, then you will take care of the necessities. You will still find a way to profit within your business. You will be successful in your endeavors. Now, for all these people, and it's generally when I'm looking at these profiles, it looks like it's generally kids. Kids who've never been exposed to the idea of buying music. Kids who feel like because this is the way they came up, this is the way it's always going to be. And it's very discouraging to hear that, especially when they're categorizing themselves as fans. The consumers should not be making executive decisions for us as artists, nor for the real fans. I want to go ahead and draw your attention to something else that was unrelated, but it just kind of just hammers home what I'm talking about when I say that someone is merely a consumer. In this particular exchange, Russ put up, as he always does, some information that could help inform his audience about things that are happening to him as an independent artist. In this particular tweet, he informs people about the new potential ban of TikTok. And so he retweets it. He gives some thoughts about it. And then one of his fans says bro i respect you and you're such a great artist even got tickets to the new tour my second show of yours but i truly don't understand why you feel the need to comment about stuff like this publicly i feel if you had better social media discipline more people would like you 
What? Russ cleverly hits him back with a quote tweet and says, thanks for buying tickets. <laughs> I think the shut up and dribble take works for some artists. Some simply don't have much to say. Some do, but are scared if they say it, they'll lose fans. So they keep their shit to themselves. I'd rather be free from fear. I know my fans F with me for me at this point. Me for me. Lots of artists got to walk on eggshells in interviews. Public platforms are just avoid them because they know their fans would be in shambles if they actually knew how they thought about things. Once again, I'd rather be free. Shout out to you, Russ. Somebody gonna have to tell the truth and I'm gonna tell it. Wrap that man up like a damn sandwich. That's how it should be. DIYers. All the different changes that you've been seeing from the reaction to the DSPs and the low payouts, all the artists that are speaking up. You know, I, I know that there's fans who were like, man, I wish you would just focus on the music. That's a fair statement. I understand where you're coming from. Right. You didn't come here for all that. However, when you sign up to be a fan of someone, you're not just saying I'm only here for when you do the thing that I like. You're saying the entire package for what it is. I'm here as a fan of you. At some level, it's beyond the music. Shout out to Pat Flynn. He described this so brilliantly in his book called Super Fans. There's casual fans, active fans, there's community members, and then there are super fans. There's levels to this. It's crazy how many backflips you watch artists do because they don't want to lose the fractions of a penny that they're getting paid by streaming. So they do whatever is necessary to get those fractions. If it means putting out an egregious amount of music, they'll do that just to keep that money coming through. If it means doing TikTok dances, even though their music has nothing to do with that, damn it, I'll do it. Whatever I got to do to try to bring this paper in, man, I got too many expenses. I got to pay these bills. Even on top of that, you have their need to satisfy casuals. It's probably a highlight likelihood these folks won't give a damn what the artists are doing in a year because they'll move on like a Kanye West it's crazy the amount of kids who think they have a better strategy for releasing music than the guy who's been in this game for 20 years plus <laughs> The guy who's been, who's been in this industry longer than some of them been alive. It's crazy. However, I don't believe that they represent everyone. When I took my music off of streaming, it was a challenge for me at the level that I am at. It was a challenge for me because of all the controversy that I had coming at me in a way that I had never experienced before just by saying I'm taking my music off of streaming. But for Kanye West to do it when he doesn't necessarily need to, when he has other streams of revenue already going, you have to understand, regardless of how you feel about the man, there's a ripple effect when people on his level of doing things do this. There's a ripple effect even when he pump fakes. If he chooses to put up the music on his website, sell some units, then go to streaming, there's still a ripple effect. There's still a cause and effect that occurs after he does that because it's Kanye West. We are in the midst of a revolution, a music revolution that will not be streamed. Those are my opinions. You let me know what you think, DIYers. DIY. DIYers, if you enjoyed this content, make sure that you hit the like button and maybe even consider subscribing. Come on, man. Stop, stop being greedy. Peace.